friends, and welcome back to the sesh. We are so happy to have you here today. My name is Kendall Ray. And my name is Janelle Ray. I know. I feel like you need, you should be like Janelle Day. Janelle Day. Janelle Bay. Janelle Bay. I am Janelle Bay. <laughs> We're happy you're here with us today. I'm Kendall Ray, and, and this I'm is Janelle, Janelle Bay. Bay. Ew, that's so cringe. Imagine if I literally like, started going by that. It could be a thing. Janelle Bay and Janelle Kendall Bay. Ray. Oh, Bernie. Very dramatic. Look, Bernie's here today, guys. Yes. I don't know why he never wants to hang out on this. He doesn't no like today. being like on this couch for some reason. No, he gets kind of stressed out. I think Charlie makes him a little nervous because I don't know. Says the, this dude like barely moves. I know. He's it's, like a statue. It's just anxiety. I mean, he's afraid of my baby. So, wow, ravioli. Oh my god, oh, ravioli. It's okay. Don't get scared. Ravioli. It's you need fighting. a haircut, festy bestie. Yes, I know. It's okay. I know. Does he? He doesn't look that bad though. Right? Oh, he's a very cute boy. He's so handsome. Are Rav. people gonna shame him? Don't shame him. Are no. they gonna shame me? No shaming people. And we've actually had a lot of issues. Getting him groomed has just been like kind of like one thing after another. So hopefully he gets groomed this week. It's been Aww. rescheduled again. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. He's hopefully, okay, ravioli. Hopefully in time for the holidays. He'll be looking fresh. Happy holidays. <laughs> anyway, today's episode is brought to you by Poop Lunch Beauty. <laughs> 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 yes, folks, that is P-O-O-P-L-U-N-C-H. <laughs> dot com slash sesh. <laughs> okay, no, we okay. wish. We wish we were sponsored by this brand. We just Poop spent, lunch. I'm not kidding, probably 20 minutes. There were tears coming out of my eyes. Yeah, we were like crying laughing. We were laughing so hard. I was looking. So I'm on like a whole lash search these days for the best strip lashes. Best strip lashes. I really love, loved my extensions for a long time. Janelle is hardcore extensions. Oh, extensions until I die, bitch. Even They're so then. good. I love them. Even then. Bury me with extensions. Don't I better worry. get a full set. Put it in your will. <laughs> I better be prepared with a full set, motherfucker. Just like Chloe was like, I'm yeah. going to get it very nails. topped off. That's right. Full set. That's right. Knock um, on wood. Now I'm freaked out. Anyways. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's, let's all knock on the wood. In her search for the best lash. Yeah, I was just trying to look on, you know, what's Amazon got for lashes? Because mm-hmm. my go-to is the, see, he already left. No, he literally hates it here. And he just looks at us like, can we fucking leave? Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't like, like being at the, the office. He sits by the front door. He's never satisfied, this guy. Never satisfied. Ugh, Anyways. He's stressed because Josh isn't here. And now, if one parent isn't here, Where is Josh? starts feeling anxiety. He's he getting was? a haircut. Oh, I was like, he was here? Where'd he go? <laughs> Got I it. I made him get a haircut because we're going to the family's, his family's house for Thanksgiving. And I'm like, you look kind of crazy. So, I am. Had to get the haircut. Okay. Um, anyway, I was looking at all of these strip lashes. Like I said, I've been into the faux mink mm-hmm. by Ardell. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I would like to, you know, expand my horizons. And one of the top brands is Poop Lunch. She literally, I'm in the middle of filming an ad and all of a sudden she just busts out laughing. I'm like, what? And she goes, I'm sorry. And she shows me her phone. She says, look at the brand of these. And it's literally Poop Lunch. One word, <laughs> Poop Lunch. Half the time I feel like dry shampoo leaves my hair feeling even grosser than before i used it but vega mars is really the best thank you so much for that <laughs> it was just kidding. what wait what i was looking at <laughs> what i was looking at false lashes on amazon look at the brand <laughs> poop what is it called <laughs> poop lunch <laughs> what is it looking at amazon <laughs> In one Poop word. lunch. Poop lunch. One word. Poop <laughs> lunch. <laughs> That's, gotta be a troll. That. That's gotta be a troll. There's no fucking way that people Poop are lunch. seriously. <laughs> I have the best oh. lashes from Poop Lunch. <laughs> yeah, I do you like my, my lashes or Poop Lunch? <laughs> that is the funniest thing I've ever heard. And they even have branding. Look at that. They have an Instagram. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Poop lunch beauty. <laughs> so <laughs> that is amazing, oh and I want to buy God. them. Have any of you ever tried this brand? I have to know. Yes. I have to know who named this poop lunch and why. Like, what's the story behind? I need poop to know. Lunch? I'm like, we need so the history. Now. Go, we Carly, go into the comments of that post. Oh, uh, you have to be logged in. Hold on, I can log in real quick. I'm gonna go to pooplunch.com. They don't have a website. No, no, no website. Although it says they're on um, <laughs> lunch, I just can't handle it. Why is that so it funny? Says they're on the, they're in Walmart. 
supposedly. I think that fucking was fucking hilarious. Well, I think that was just like a like they're just like a realtor. I'm a realtor. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, they sell how retail. Move lunch reality. <laughs> oh guys there's a there's a review we can watch on youtube there's a couple oh, on tiktok wait, too wait oh my god okay bring up we, this youtube review i want to know if poop lunch is any good yes poop lunch Ooh, the, the top search on google's it's a yahoo actually it says why there may be poop in your lunch oh, okay <laughs> that's not what we're asking <laughs> do we want to know poop lunch but before we head into this poop lunch um, review, we need to thank our true sponsors, which are yes. Vegamore, Manscaped, Storyworth, and Dipsy. Thank you, sponsors. We love you. More on them in a little bit. But okay, have we found the review? All right. So this is from a YouTuber, Life with Chrisley. Oh, speaking of Chrisley, you follow the Chrisleys? This is really off topic. Oh, that reality show. Yeah. Huh? No, they're about to like, go to jail. Yeah, I heard they, they're in some fraud. fucking hot water. Yeah, they're in a lot of hot water. They're like being Oops. sentenced and they could possibly go to prison. Ooh, fun. I need to tune into that. Fun, she says. I'm out of, I've been fun. watching a polygamy show. Oh, okay, that's nice. I'm on a little polygamy binge, as you guys can tell. Right now <laughs> I'm watching, what's it called? Uh, Seeking Sister Wife. It's good shit. Uh, are you feel? are you fulfilling some fantasies of yours maybe maybe sometimes me and josh think of bringing a sister would you ever bring in a sister i don't know i told josh the day that we bring in a sister will be the day that we bring in a, an extra hubs too I, that's what i want to see a reality show yeah i was gonna say they do they with do that sis, with brother husbands brother husbands <laughs> that's what we need sister wives brother, <laughs> brother husband it would be great <laughs> can you imagine like three do they guys? do that They've got to fucking do that. It's Why is it that somewhere? men only get multiple wives? I don't know. Show about woman with multiple husbands. We're getting way off track from Poop Lunch. Big Love is an American drama TV series. Blah, blah, blah. It stars Bill Paxson. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. No, that's not it. Sorry. Uh, Brother Husbands. Hope, but... Brother Husbands. There's literally a thing. TV. TLC tried to showcase... Something something was serious. I think they tried to make this. Brother Husbands. It didn't work out? I don't think so. I don't know. This is In Touch Weekly. Mm. Brother Husbands was actually a TV show because something something exists. Oh, yeah. I think it was at one point. I don't know how well it did. Okay. I'm going to have to check that out. Anyways. Okay. Let's oh, watch our review. We're ready. Chris, Chris Lee. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. My vision's just bad. It's Chrissy. Mom, you just waste oh. my time. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna be doing a quick little review on some lashes that I purchased from Amazon. Please say And yeah, so let's get into this little review. So, the reason why I bought these lashes from Amazon is because I was at CVS the other day and I was like, I need me some lashes and the prices that they want on those lashes, True. I think they Amazon were the Kiss lashes and they want like 10, 12 bucks for yeah. one pair. And I was like, what? I was like, no, Damn, I'm, I've they're never they're paid that much for Kiss like lashes like and I'm not about to start doing it doing it so let me go check on amazon to see what they got and i was like yeah let me check these little bad boys out so this is from i don't know if i'm gonna say this right i might mess this up but i'm gonna link it down in the description it, so you girl. guys can find it and please check it out it. but it's it. called poop lunch false lashes <laughs> But I got the fluffy ones. But this is Hoop what they lunch. look like. like Let's get who a came up with Actually, that? I'm take this thing off. Who blunt? Here's a close up lashes. Hoop so you guys can see. Dude, this is literally real life. <laughs> this is real life. Really nice. Damn, those are fucking hairy as hell. Those look cute though. They're fluffy. Sorry. Yeah, they're super okay, fluffy. Clearly, we have to get them and try them out. And I think they're all the same. Should we do our own poop lunch review? Them, yeah. I'm going to order some poop so, lunch. <laughs> 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 Holy shit. I guess let's go ahead and try these lashes on and see what they look I like. See all right, like let's see her. what they look like on here. Yeah. All right, all right. Before sure. we make the decision. Quick little update. I want to show you guys these lashes. Damn, those are beautiful. I have lashes those are right gorgeous. now. These are the lashes from Amazon. Oh, this is poop what lunch comes through, you guys. Damn, she looks so good. Sorry, I'm in my husband's office right now, so... Damn, poop but, lunch coming through. You know, I'm really loving these lashes. <laughs> I definitely think that you guys should order. Raving review. Okay, all right. Done. Ordered. Visit the poop lunch store. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. 
thing. You can subscribe to Poop Lunch. You should get your Poop Lunch every day. Oh, oh my God. Every my God. day if you need it. I'm buying wow. them. We're going to have some Poop Lunches in the office. Oh, my God. So really? we <laughs> tied it. Look, and they're also like number one on Amazon. Is that what you said? I know. Yeah, they're like one of the top sellers. Who came up with this name? I need yeah, to like, know what's so the name? I like, want to know this that? story. There's no website. Like, there should be a story of like how this came about. Well, one day our executive cues. was Go at lunch questions. and there was some poop in her lunch. So she decided <laughs> to name it that. Ew, wow. Because it was the same day that she came up with the idea to make the lashes. There's got to be a story. Come on. Oh, damn it. What? I'm ordering them right now. We're Anyways, ordering these to the office. Big poop lunch fans here. Yeah, we are. <laughs> um, poop lunch, please sponsor our show. Dude, that'd be so funny. I would die. Mm -hmm. oh, can't wait for them to come in. Hopefully we'll have them by the time we film next oh, and we could try them out. I'm so mature. It makes me laugh so hard so if there's poop in anything. It's oh, so same. I can't me. handle myself. Poop humor just kills me every time. <laughs> it makes with lunch. Oh, poop. lunch is just a funny word as it is. Don't you think so? Lunch? I don't know why. I just think lunch is funny. Lunch? lunch poop just, lunch? I just lunch. I thought at first you said poop launch, <laughs> but then when I figured it was poop lunch, it came... It was 10 times funnier than it already was. And you kind of say it fast. It sounds like a French beauty Poop name. Like, Poop Lunch. Poop Lunch. <laughs> I love the Poop Lunches. Poop Lunch. <laughs> Amazing. Oh my gourd. All right. I'm ordering them to the office right now. <gasps> I might you. order a pack too, to be honest. We can have a little lash off. Well, I think we should have plenty. It comes with plenty for <laughs> all of us to share. They got a lot of styles. They do got lots of styles. Wow. That's incredible. How much are they going for? Oh, they're on sale right now. For eight ninety nine, hey, That's you know right. what else is on sale? Merch, yay! Smilehiremerch.com. You can get twenty five percent off mm, almost mm, every mm, single mm, freaking mm, mm. item on this site, people. Um, by the time this episode goes up, you'll have a little less than a week left of our uh, oh, sale. Yeah. It ends on the thirtieth. Time's so flying. be sure to head on over to milehiremerch.com to grab your sale items and also. Once we sell out of these items, they're gone forever. We're not yeah. restocking. So mm -hmm. you need a spicy sweatshirt. Out. Yeah, we are selling out. So you want a spicy sweatshirt? You want to keep it fresh sweatshirt? You want a uh, tiny trip shirt? You better yes. head on over to get your shit. Yep. It's going to run out. Better come up here and get yourself one of these. Unfortunately, we do not sell poop merch. Poop lunch. Poop. Oh, my God. What if we made poop lunch merch? No, we can't sell well, their brand. Dealing yeah, with you're brand. Right. No, you're right. You're right. Well, we could just, just so make funny. like a graphic. Of uh, that poop and lunch, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a brown bag. I can picture it now. A little turd emoji Who with a brown that? bag. Someone would buy it, dude. Oh my god. Anyway, well, we've got them ordered, so we will check them out in the next episode. We Bam. can try them out. All right. Do our own little review. Um, Charlie, what's his name this week? You we said we're gonna have a new name for Charlie Fuck. every week. Paro. What was his? Oh right, Paro. We decided to call him Paro this week. Yes, and if you're wondering, can we see why? him. Bring him up. Yeah. Paro, we recently uh, discussed this little yes. cute robot named Paro on Mile Higher. It's actually, the episode isn't out yet. Yeah, I just realized the episode will not be but out that's yet. that's okay. It's a little a... sneak peek. Or wait, maybe it will be out. It will not be out yet. It will be coming no. out in a few days. This is coming out on Thursday oh. or Friday. Oh, it'll be out very next week. shortly. Very but anyways, shortly. we talk about this very cute little stuffed animal robot named Paro. Yeah, have you Aww. seen this, Sydney? No, it's You would so die cute. over it. It is so cute. Thing. Can you bring up a video of it on YouTube, Corelli, for Cindy to see? Oh my gosh, it's for people, like older people? Mm -hmm. It's, like a, it's and a companion. People in the hospital, it's a therapeutic robot. It's oh, so my God. freaking cute. It's like the one thing we kind of were excited about in our robot episode. Oh, Everything else was like no. absolute devastation and destruction. <laughs> but anyway, cute seal. Cute seal. <laughs> Dude, this thing's cute as hell. Are you kidding me? I would totally get one. It's adorable. And Charles looks like it. Look at that. Oh. It's so freaking it's cute. So Anyways, yeah, he's cute as frick. You pet him and he makes little cooing noises, his little eyelashes, bat. Look at his little eyes. Uh -huh. So cute. It's the cutest thing I've oh ever seen. Oh my God, I love him. Oh. His little whiskers, when you touch his whiskers, he's so cute. And they've had great success with this thing too. Yeah, their studies show that um, these types of robot animals work just as well if not better than real service animals which is yeah. a little alarming <laughs> so service animals are going to be obsolete in the future mm -hmm. but anyways that's what charles name is this week paro paro the seal yeah he definitely can be paro Paro. also we found a little christmas outfit for charlie oh my we god i try to get him 
We, I need to buy that. Yeah, can we he pull that looks up like a literal. I think it's in our sesh chat. Freaking snowman. So, anyways, we'll be um getting that costume. Be on the lookout for Charles the Little Snowman. Mm-hmm. It's a business write-off. That's right. <laughs> Tis the season. <laughs> So in my personal opinion, one of the best gifts that you can give your relatives this holiday season is the gift of story worth. And I mean that. I think it is such a cool and unique gift. If you're spending time with loved ones for the holidays, chances are you're going to hear a lot of stories. Some that you love to hear, some that you've heard many times. But have you ever wanted to help your loved ones document those timeless stories? Obviously, it can be a big challenge to write an entire book of life memories. But with story worth, they make it fun and easy. And here's how anyone can write a book about their life. Every week, StoryWorth will email your loved one a single life-related question that you pick from their collection, such as, what's the bravest thing you've ever done? What's the furthest you've ever traveled? And all they have to do is reply with a story. And then after a year, StoryWorth compiles all of your loved one's stories, memories, and even photos into an exquisite hardcover book, creating a valued keepsake. Millions of stories have already been told with StoryWorth because they make the process so simple. Get started with your loved one for the holidays, and before you know it, you'll both be cherishing those timeless stories for generations to come. Help your family members share their stories this holiday season with StoryWorth. Go to storyworth.com slash sesh today and save $10 on your first purchase. That's S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H dot com slash sesh to save $10 on your first purchase storeworth.com slash sesh. All right. So as you guys know, we do try to keep it fun here on the sesh. We always want to be having a good time with you guys and having a lot of LOLs and learning some new things along the way. Um, However, this weekend, we are all feeling pretty heavy right now. I mean, our whole state is really mourning um, due to a terrible shooting that occurred on well i guess it was technically technically saturday, saturday night but well it started saturday night i liked you know, um, 11 57 yes and so november 19th club q in colorado springs um was shot up mm-hmm. and five people have died and there are how many injured at this point i think 25 the 20 number keeps going up five um and this also occurred on Transgender Day of Rem- Remembrance. Mm-hmm. And it was a clear attack on the LGBTQ plus community. And I mean, as a Coloradan, as anyone in this country, it is an incredibly devastating thing to hear about once again that here we are. Yep. It's like, it's just hard to find the words after so many times. I mean, we have talked about shootings here before that have happened Mm -hmm. in Colorado. And obviously these happen all over the country all the time. And we can't speak on every single one or we would literally have to start our show every week by discussing. That's how prevalent it is in America. But we really wanted to talk about this today because it's so close to us. This is in Colorado Springs. We're like about an hour from there. And um, we know people... (laughs) I mean, at least I know someone who knows someone who was there. And it's just like when it happens that close, it hits home differently, you know? Totally. And I think people can, you know, understand whenever something happens and you're kind of in the same state or have some sort of personal connection. Obviously, it doesn't make it any, you know, more important than something else. But I think you can almost relate to it more in a way because of the fact that, you know, we've all been to Colorado Springs. We all are familiar with that area to some degree. And it just, yeah. I mean, that's, that's uh, like my home. Like I was raised there. I was born there. And uh, a lot of like in Pueblo, I mean, there's not very many places to go out. So in Pueblo, we go to Springs. And I mean, it is incredibly close to home that it's, and this is the only gay bar in Colorado Springs. Springs, Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. It's somewhere that a ton of people really saw as a safe place um in an area that colorado springs is definitely like i know people think if you just look at the election or whatever like it seems to be very like liberal and progressive state but yes that's true in denver and boulder but a lot of places in colorado Mm -hmm. are still very conservative and colorado springs being one of them there's a lot of Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, homophobic activity yeah. in Colorado Springs. Yes. And this was one place where people who are a part of the LGBTQ plus community can go to feel safe and to just be themselves and feel like they belong somewhere. And now that's stripped from them. It's just, it's hard to put into words how you can, I mean... I just don't understand how someone could have Ugh. so much hatred towards people who are just living their lives. Yeah, who they don't know. And who are just minding their business and going to a place where, you know, it's hard enough, like I was just saying, to feel accepted in society, being a part of the LGBTQ plus community. So you go to somewhere where you feel like you belong and where you mm -hmm. can be yourself and where you feel safe and mm -hmm. where you feel wanted and some piece of shit comes in and takes that from you why would you do that i just there's really no words we just felt like we needed to discuss it because obviously this is so fresh yeah it's just been kind of shocking like watching this all play out and just feeling like wow here we are once again and it obviously reminds it reminds you of pulse in orlando yep. and what happened you know years ago and it's just it's so sad we've made no progress. No, absolutely literally no progress. no progress. It's just getting worse, it seems like. <sighs> and this guy who did it, and we don't want to talk about no. him much or his name, but I wanted to say that this guy was literally arrested for a bomb threat last summer. And stalking mm -hmm. or kidnapping, sorry. There's a video of him. You can pull it up on your own of him being arrested outside of his house. And <sighs> trying to wrap your mind around how someone like that can go get a gun and do this is unbelievable. And who is this guy? He's also his uncle is a Californian his, his lawmaker. His his was grandpa, a, is a whatever. Former Colorado or California lawmaker who is extremely yes. Uh, I guess you could say conservative. Yes, and like extreme homophobic yeah. and has you know extremist views. Yep, <sighs> and that's his grandpa. And it's just hearing about hearing people recount what happened this was a lively happy environment they were having a drag show that night because, when this started yeah because it was the next day sunday is uh trans day of remembrance yes. and the day before they were having like a bunch of events they were just mm -hmm. having like a drag show i think they had like a, yep. a drag a brunch and they had just a bunch of things scheduled that day that mm -hmm. i mean people were celebrating celebrating absolutely enjoying themselves and for someone to come in when people are so caught off guard into a scene like that it's terrifying to think about what those people went through in those moments and it sounds like there was one or maybe even two heroic you know people who were there that mm -hmm. actually stopped him or else it could have been way worse mm -hmm. like authorities gave them all the credit the people who were there that stopped this but yeah five people lost their life over fucking nothing because some freak was able to get his his hands on a gun and this this is just going back to all of the fucking rhetoric and bullshit and i'm i'm just so fucking tired of hearing people even in our comment section when we talk about trans issues like recently we spoke on this and we got so many just disgusting horrific comments for people who have no idea what the fuck they're talking about blabbing about and spreading this type of hatred and misinformation all over the internet all the time. I mean, there were people commenting, you need to call Caitlyn Jenner a he. She's bi, he's whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys sound like idiots. And this is the result of all of that rhetoric hatred and hatred being spewed. that's being constant. It's like the top fucking top, top, you know, talking points for some people these days on different political shows. And uh, it's hard not to get political in these moments. It is like but, why it should be. Everyone's like but it's it not is. political. Well, it fucking is political. Yeah, unfortunately, it's made to be political, and this is the fucking result of it. This now people are dead, and the amount of transgender people who are murdered every year, gay people who are murdered every year, is astounding. It is, and it only seems to be getting worse because the hatred is just rising, and it's being used as as a way to try and scare people into voting a certain way. And it's fucking sick. We're all tired of it. And that this news was just such a slap in the face. <sighs> I just Sorry, can't, I'm getting really heated, I can't believe that 
It's just you can so hate upsetting. someone for being themselves. It's the fucking most bizarre. I can never wrap my mind around it. Especially when their life the choices evil. have no have no effect on your life yes. whatsoever. It's nothing, you. nothing to do with you. It has nothing it is to so fucking do bizarre. with you. Okay, recently I went out to dinner and was next to people, these homophobic women, these three of them, they were just blabbing the most hateful, untrue shit I have ever heard in a public setting. And to actually, it's one thing to hear it online, mm -hmm. hear it on a TV show, mm -hmm. hear it on a podcast, but to sit next to someone that's doing that in public, I was completely blown away. Disgusted. And as soon as this happened, they popped up in my mind. And it's people like them that's spreading this crap that, you know, this is on you. No, it I'm is. I'm tired of it. I'm just absolutely <sighs> disgusted by so many people. Why do you give a shit? Like you were just saying, why do you care? What this has nothing to do with you. It's weird. What is your obsession? What? Right, are, yeah, right. honestly, like I don't. I really don't understand the obsession of conservatives with with genitalia. Like the, yes. their obsession with genitalia in general yeah. is mm -hmm. absurd. It's bizarre. It's it's weird. It's fucking weird. And mm -hmm. like it just it's 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 and never been the, about that. It's it's never. It's I don't. It's just disgusting. It's it is. infuriating. And the amount of misinformation that they're constantly oh, spreading things that are not even true. I mean, like not even close to being true, like yes. so fucking out of left field when, you know, the transgender population in our country is such a small percentage of people, too, that why are you focusing so much on that? Because you're creating all this hype and all this heat around it is becoming one of the main voting issues right. that is focusing people freaks like this who are sitting around with guns and whatever bombs mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they fucking think to go do this mm -hmm. to innocent people who are just enjoying their night what? I just can't understand this type of evil. And the cherry on top of all of this is the person who represents Colorado Springs, Congresswoman fucking Lauren uh, Boer Boebert, hops yeah. on Twitter after and says, the news out of Colorado Springs is awful. The, the, this morning, the victims and their families are in my prayers. The lawless violence needs to end and end quickly. Meanwhile, she has been so fucking hateful towards people in the LGBTQ yeah, she's one community. Of the worst. She is one of the worst. She has talked about how the uh, age to be able to come out, it should be 21. Otherwise, it should be illegal. What? She's a fucking Ooh, crazy freak. bitch. And she's she's tweeted shit like, take your children to church, not to drag bars. Like, shut the fuck up. You're, you have blood on your hands. All these people Agreed. who spread hateful like, hateful shit like this and then turn around and offer thoughts and prayers and something like that. Fuck you. Take mm -hmm. your thoughts and prayers and shove it up your ass. Because yeah, that means amen. nothing when you talk about this kind of shit. Yes. And spread agree. this kind of fucking hate. And then say, oh, whoops, thoughts and prayers. Fuck yep. you. And all the people out there that are engaging with it, encouraging it. It's, I mean, it's a pandemic for a reason. There's tons of people that contribute to events like this happening. And I am so fucking angry. I can't even imagine how. How can you not be? <sighs> how can we not be angry? What the fuck? When is this going to change, dude? Like, it's not. Clearly, when is this, it it's feels not. like it's just getting worse and worse. Just, you know, <sighs> gun violence in general in America. Yeah. It's what terrifying. The fuck I don't want to go on? anywhere. No, literally anywhere. It could happen anywhere at any time. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what to say or how to end this. We I don't just know wanted either. to. We, yeah, we just felt like we had to say something yeah. because this has been something that's been really heavy on our minds for the last 24 hours. It feels weird. You know, we we do like to come in here. We like to have fun. We like to, to chat and everything. Mm -hmm. But this happened so close to us and it feels like it's in our own backyard in a way, mm -hmm. you know, and it didn't feel right to not speak on it today. We have a voice. And we feel like we need to use it. Yeah. And of course, there will be people that are, don't get political. I don't give Whatever. a fuck. There are people in my lives. We all have people in our life that are part of the LGBTQ plus community that yes. I fucking love. Yep. So I feel like it's a right thing to do is to stand mm -hmm. up for these people. And the platform that we do have, we need to use it to make it certainly yeah. clear on what our thoughts are. Because this on is this. extremely serious. And all of all of these people... I mean, obviously, it's bigger than just our comment section, but to the people out here who I know are watching that have commented horrific things on our episodes. You just make you know, me want to talk about it more. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> like, do. But I just want to say to you, it's not too late to get on the right side of history, dude, because one day you're going to look back and feel like a real piece of shit. Or you won't, and that's even worse. So all of the GoFundMes that we can find will be linked below. If you choose to donate, they, of course, would be really appreciative. If you can't, I understand, too. Times yeah. are tough. Maybe even just sharing the link. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's... <sighs> I don't even know where to like go from here. I just feel like 
there's really like no oh, right way to like so end depressing. this. We just wanted to bring this up and yeah, and just you know everyone out there who is uh, you know seen this happening and is feeling lost and sad and scared and angry that we feel the same way as mm -hmm. you and we're here with you. You know we're all in it together <laughs> in this fucking country. God, when I woke up, I was trying to just look up what happened because you texted me. I woke up to your text yeah. saying that it happened. So I started Googling, trying to figure out what's going on. And I get the first article I click on has a fucking paywall. I don't know what it was about that in the moment where I'm like, I really have to pay to then read about this shooting that happened. Right. People are making money off of it. It's just I have a lot to work on. Yeah. So anyway, we will have all of those resources below. Um, and yeah, I wish there was better things to say. We send our love to anyone out there who knew someone who's there or has been affected by this in any way. And just like the LGBTQ plus community in general, like we stand with you guys and we're here. Like, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. especially as like a cis woman, like mm -hmm. our our word, our like support is just like that much more for other like cis, like other cis people to kind of like follow behind you know what i mean like yeah. it kind of like in a way like it kind of does have to start with you know with we're the privileged we ones. are the privileged ones absolutely yeah 100 percent. so we send our love to <sighs> anyone who's been affected by this yeah maybe we should take a little break calm down okay okay so we just wanted to pop on here again we normally record our episodes on monday it is now tuesday and a lot more information has come out in the last 24 hours about the shooting at club q and we just wanted to share some of this. First of all, we have the names of the victims. Yes. Um, which we wanted to share that. So their names are Daniel Aston, Raymond Green Vance, Kelly Loving, Ashley Paw, and Derek Rump. And as of right now, it's just those five who lost their lives. But mm -hmm. there were many other injured. And we're not sure if that number will go up. Um, however, we did find out how... This guy was stopped. I know. I know. Yesterday we mentioned that, you know, some of the people there were heroes and actually stopped the shooter themselves. We got more information about that. Turns out, an army veteran, Richard Fierro, had gone to Club Q that night with his family, and apparently he attacked the shooter. He jumped on him, and then a. At first, it was reported that a drag queen stomped on him with her heels and beat him so badly that they thought he was dead. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, this has been uh, commented on by Delusional, who was a drag queen performer that night and said, the one who saved my life and stomped on the shooter's face was not a drag queen. She is a trans woman. Let's not call trans women drag queens during this time of grieving over a transphobic attack. I also want to make it clear, I don't think Richard knew that she's not a drag performer, but now that we know, let's correct it. So, yeah, Two it's, it's kind of crazy how this all went down. Um, totally inspiring. These people saved tons of others. And we wanted to play this um, interview of Richard real quick, just kind of talking about his experience. I saw a lot of people. And this guy was there and I saw the ACU pattern uh, flag fest. And for me, that was like, there's a handle, I'm getting it. So I ran across the room, grabbed the handle, pulled him down and then started to, uh, well, actually I think I went for his gun with him. His rifle flew in front of him. Um, and the young man that tried to jump in there with me, um, he, he, we both either pulled him down or whatever, but he ended up at his head uh, and right next to the AR. And then with the AR, he, we, I told him, push the AR, get the AR away, away from him. The kid pushed the AR. I, I don't know what his name was. Um, and then I, I proceeded to take his other weapon, the pistol, and then just start hitting him at where I could, but the armor's in the way. And I just started, I found a crease in his, between his, his armor and his head. And I just started wailing away, uh, with his gun. Um, and then I told the kid in front of me, kick him, keep kicking him. And we were, I was, I was guiding people, I was telling people, call 911, call 911. I brought him down. I, I, <laughs> I was in mode. I was, I was doing what I did. I do down range, you know, I train, I trained for this. I don't want to ever do this. I, I didn't even retire because I was just, I was done doing this stuff. It was too much. And, uh, I, I'm 
you know, it came in handy and, and I got to protect my, my kid. I lost my kid's boyfriend. I tried. I tried to have everybody in there. I still feel bad that there's five people. That, there's five people that didn't go home. And this, this guy, I told him while I was eating, I said, I'm going to kill you, man, because you tried to kill my friends. My family was in there. Just heartbreaking to hear his voice crack when he talks about how he wishes he could have saved everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but the two of them are heroes. And yeah, it sounds like this could have been much, much worse. Yep. Yeah, Richard was with his wife, Jess, joined by their daughter, Cassandra, mm -hmm. and her longtime boyfriend, Raymond Green Vance, who sadly was one of the five that lost their lives. Ah, their poor family. Mm -hmm. So traumatic. Yeah, and they were all there to watch one of his daughter's friends perform a drag act. And I guess um, Richard was loving it. He had spent 15 years in the Army and now relished his role as a civilian and a father watching one of his daughter's old high school friends perform. He says, these kids want to live that way, want to have a good time, have at it. I'm happy about it because that's what I fought for, so they can do whatever the hell they want. Oh, I love that. So, yeah, we just wanted to pop in and kind of clarify that because um, we feel like it's important to, of course, give recognition to these two heroes that, mm -hmm. you know, saved potentially a lot of lives and also give our respects to those who lost their life. Okay, so we just took... A brief moment to kind of calm down we know we just got very heated this is just a very very upsetting issue that's you know hits home for all of us in different ways and it's incredibly angering and you know it's impossible to like stuff those emotions down and i think more than ever it's important to speak, speak up, up and really say how we feel and we know that comes with backlash on the internet but we don't really care nope. so anyway we do want to have some fun with you guys today. We want this to be a safe place where we can have some laughs and kind of escape um, from the everyday bullshit, you know? Mm -hmm. So we are here with a couple of spicy topics. Mm -hmm. We are going to be talking about Twitter once again, <laughs> which is still on fire. Fire. Big time. Um, and you know what's also on fire? Ticketmaster. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Ticketmaster's in a lot of trouble, potentially. Mm -hmm, Should we mm -hmm. talk about Elon first or Ticketmaster? Well, first, oh, right. we were going to mention that Pink Sauce is now available. Breaking news! <laughs> Breaking news! <laughs> the biggest news of all, Pink Sauce! Pink Sauce, folks! Okay, so Pink Sauce, if you didn't know, is the viral TikTok sauce that we tried to get our hands on. We yes. ordered some. Chef P canceled our asses. Mm -hmm. Never, um, never got it. To it. Us. Um, but it canceled the orders for tons of people. It was mm -hmm. a big thing. And then the FDA came and saw Chef P. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. said, we'll call you later. <laughs> yeah. We'll call you later. <laughs> anyway, she hooked up with a manufacturer. And How they, much gourmet? This originally was being, $20. Okay. $20. But so it was now also a $9.99. Now it's $9.99. And it looks like it's ready to purchase. So... Shall we purchase some, ladies? Uh, I say we shall. I say we shall. Now, if you go to the pictures of this pink sauce, I have to say that the picture of the pink sauce on this chicken wing here looks as though it isn't very pink. Mm -mm. Like, no. that looks kind of yeah. like Chick-fil-A sauce or something. Like, it looks yeah. like a more normal Pepto sauce. pink that it was before. They must have changed the recipe. Well, also, um, there is ingredients at the bottom now. Oh, dragon oh. fruit puree yes. is the She's first really one. really stepped it up. Canola oil, oh. coconut cream, water, sugar, distilled white vinegar, garlic, maltodextrin, ranch flavor. I would like to try it. Dragon I want fruit that. puree? So I think we need to cream. have a day where we try pink sauce on various items okay. okay so we uh, will order that up hopefully mm -hmm. it comes in a quicker time than what it was doing before yeah can we get express shipping yeah that would be great and yeah we will see how this tastes folks because i am curious i'm glad that Me we can too. put a uh end to our pink sauce journey because i've been wondering <laughs> and people still comment like what's the deal and i know i saw last week a lot of people were being like any updates on pink sauce we got an update she's finally selling it so she's back. Excellent. Keep an eye out on uh, the YouTubes for that because we will be trying that out. I hope it's good. Oh. So as you guys know, we are big advocates for taking care of your mental health here on The Sesh. And with that comes self-care, whether that's taking a bath, playing with your dog, 
or taking care of your, all of your needs, especially personal needs. And that is why I love Dipsy. Transport your mind to a world where you can relax and treat yourself to your deepest desires with Dipsy. Self-care has never sounded better. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. Find stories about a steamy hookup in wine country. There are two ways to get things done in Florence's world, her way or the highway, until Tim shows up and turns her world upside down. And Dipsy is extremely inclusive. This is one of the reasons why I love their service so much. Dipsy has stories for straight and queer listeners, so you really will be sure to find something that you personally enjoy. And new content is released every week. So in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. And they also have soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions, and sexy stories you can read. Let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or heat things up with a partner. For listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash sesh. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash sesh. Dipsystories.com slash sesh. Okay, shall we get into um, Elon Musk and Twitter? Here? Elon, okay, Elon Musk. So, Elon in Ma. case you have been living under a rock, Elon Musk bought Twitter for what was it, forty-four billion yeah, like dollars? You know, like, just a little, just a little pocket change, pocket change yeah, for him. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> it's been pretty wild over there ever since. Wild yeah. West over there. Yep. We've talked a lot about the whole verification badge, mm-hmm, accounts mm-hmm. being banned, mm-hmm. um, and Lay yeah. people being laid off, people sleeping at Twitter headquarters to get deadlines meet, met on time. Yes. Um, you know, all of that. So half of the Twitter workforce was laid off in early November. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's... Can you imagine that you lay off, you buy a company, you lay off half of your employees, especially in November, right before the holidays. How evil yeah. that is messed up. So weird. Also, do you, does anybody know why the reasoning for him to lay off all these people were? Was it just to like for money purposes? I think he felt like Twitter house. didn't need that many people working yeah. for it. Yeah. Oh. It could be simplified and they could save a lot of money. And he's basically trying to figure out because Twitter's really never made money. Right. Um, I mean, you know. As far as I understand it. Oh, I don't know. Do I don't think they've really made much money. Mm, it's, okay. it's never been like a big cash cow because they don't have as many, they got I don't know, ways that they can make money. And that's why he's trying to charge the $8 per user. He's like, we got to pay the bills user. somehow, exactly. bestie. I think he's trying to take it and make it more profitable. Mm. I should. I don't know if they've made no money, but I know it has been less than ideal. I think he got rid of all those people because he thought... Budget it was just, oh, yeah, budget cut. And this is crazy, but at least four people were terminated over their posts on Twitter. Yeah. Early so last week. Keeping an eye out. Yeah. Multiple employees were terminated for either posting critical about Elon's leadership or simply supporting other people who posted critically, like, you know, having their backs, essentially. Mm-hmm. And then roughly 10 other Twitter employees made sassy and critical remarks about Twitter's current leadership on Twitter and on their internal Slack channel. So if you don't know where Slack is like an app that people, we actually use it for work. And it's like a chat basically that you can talk to your employees and, Mm -hmm. you know, talk to your company inside. It's like, uh, what else? They have uh, Google Meet, you know. It's kind of like a Discord, but for your work. Yeah, it's basically like an instant message, but for people in your actual work. So anyways, I guess people were talking shit about Twitter on their Slack and they also got terminated. Elon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... His yeah. fragile ego. This fragile was very ego. hurt by that. Fragile um, ego. Which is Elon. crazy. Can't they sue him for this? Just because they said something on Slack? I mean, well, I mean, it depends, like where they're fired from. Because I mean, if they're an at will state, then does yeah. it right? Like well, Colorado's an at will state, you can yeah, just be fired for anything. Familiar with the California law. You know, one of the employees that was do it, like tweeted something that he didn't like criticizing him. He fired him over Twitter. Are you serious? Like, guy, he responded? Like, yeah, so the Shut employee... Up. No, no, it's, it's, like, crazy. So he posted his tweet about Elon. He went, like, next day came around. Mm-hmm. He couldn't get into his Twitter or something like that, or his tweet was deleted. And then um, Elon posted, like, you're fired, or tweeted, you're what fired. He tweeted at him, you're fuck? fired? 
Yeah. 2022 is a wild place. And he didn't talk to him after that. Like, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. Okay. So Elon sent a final ultimatum email (laughs) to the Twitter employees on Wednesday, November 16th. And here's what it said. A fork in the road. (laughs) So like a poem. It, it is. sound like a poem. <laughs> Haiku. Haiku. <laughs> Going forward to build a breakthrough Twitter 2.0 and succeed in an increasingly competitive world, we will need to be extremely hardcore. <laughs> this will mean working long hours at high intensity. Only exceptional performance will constitute a passing grade. What the fuck is this guy <laughs> saying? Twitter will also be much more engineering driven. Mm -hmm. Design and product management will still be very important and to report to me. Those writing great code will constitute the majority of our team and have the greatest sway. At its heart, Twitter is a software and servers company. So I think this makes sense. Yes, very much so. Sounds so so like willy nilly for such a serious email. (laughs) If you are sure that you want to be part of the new Twitter, please click yes on the link below. You made a Google form. It's like forms. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who has not done so by 5 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, Thursday, will receive three months severance. Whatever decision you make, thank you for your efforts to make Twitter successful. Hell Elon yeah. Signed, the man himself. Oh, the man himself. Oh my God. So then- yeah, pretty insane. Sounds like a lot of people... Did not want to hop on board the new Twitter. No, hundreds of employees quickly started posting farewell messages and salute emojis in Twitter Slack, <laughs> <laughs> announcing they had said no to Elon's ultimatum. Mm. And then he goes on Twitter and tweets out Thursday evening, the best people are staying, so I'm not super worried. That that sounds um not very confident. <laughs> yeah. I'm not super I'm not worried. Super worried. Just a <laughs> little bit worried. worried. <laughs> It's unclear exactly how many people left, of course. Uh, actually, the Washington Post states it could be between 1,000 to 1,500 people. Um, and then that Thursday, Twitter announced through email that it would close our office buildings and disable employee badge access until the following Monday. After all these resignations, Elon eased up on the return to office mandate that he issued a week before, and he sent multiple emails to managers saying managers must meet with employees in person once a week, at least monthly, and that managers could be fired for allowing employees to work remotely if those employees do not prove, in his view, to be excellent or exceptional. Um, okay. <laughs> so intense. And Elon's team also held meeting with the undecided employees who are considered key to Twitter's operations to try and persuade them to stay. Because they're going to be <laughs> kind of fucked. He's like, wait. And in Elon's pitch to the undecided employees, he said that he knew how to win And that those who wanted to win should join him. Oh, yeah. But it seems as though Elon's definitely struggling to figure out all of the operations of Mm -hmm. Twitter. Because obviously, when you just randomly buy Twitter and you don't know much about it, you really got to rely on your employees who have been there for a while and know the ins and outs of it. And I've kind of heard that things without most of these employees could kind of coast for a while, but eventually... The whole thing's just going to fall Implode. apart. Yeah, probably. I was going to say, yeah, how are like the Twitter servers like holding this? Like, how is this all how working? How is Twitter still alive right now? He basically says, well, he asked employees to email him a summary of what their software code has, quote unquote, achieved in the past six months, as well as screenshots of the most important lines of code. And he said that, quote, there will be short technical interviews that allow me to better understand the Twitter tech stack. So it sounds like the dude's way over his head, basically, is bottom line here. Um, he sounds very confused as to what the fuck is going on. I think he's low key freaking out now. And after he lays off all these people, that he's like, "Oh wait, actually, some of you are very important. You should stay around." <laughs> I actually, made you. Them. Whoops. Never Big mind. Whoops. I'm sorry for what I said. <laughs> Big whoops there. Uh, yeah, so that'll yeah. be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, Twitter okay. is becoming a very interesting place to check out these days. Which he said, traffic's like higher than ever. Yeah, he said that usage is higher than it's ever been. Mm-hmm. Which. I mm-hmm. actually do believe because yeah. I think people who are on it were like, oh, I need to see what the hype is about. Yeah. But everyone's word is just randomly in a shut off. That I don't understand. I Everyone's like, well, this is my last tweet, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I don't think it's going to shut down anytime well, soon. That was kind of the word for a little while is that it's all going to fall apart and whatever. I'm not sure if that yeah. was like really based on anything. It just mm-hmm. kind of seemed like a rumor that really caught fire. But who knows? 
What if it just shut down one day? How crazy! Just, All these can't displaced get Twitter users. Where will they where go? Where would we go? What would we? I do? guess like the twenty four twenty four hour like call team or support team. They like majority of them all left. Like there's yeah. none of them left. So if there's someone that has an issue, <sighs> there's no one there to fix it. Dude, and like yeah. Twitter does do. It's like you know on the back end of things like mm-hmm. software engineers. I have, but a, a lot of people are gone so they don't have like the same well shit i don't know ability to if a server breaks it breaks yeah, and they don't yeah. have really people to bring exactly it back that's kind of what it sounds like once that happens what will they do will it just right. kind of fall apart oh, at that and point elon said he's talking to people at tesla to get information like from their software team oh so God. he can try to like Use <laughs> what? both. And I, Dude, what the fuck is this guy doing? I was gonna say, what's he trying to like? Is he trying to have like a like a Tesla Crazy. Twitter collab or something? Like, what's going on here? That's wild. And then in other Twitter news, he has unbanned a lot of users. A lot. Um, of let's users. see. Kathy Griffin got her account mm-hmm. back. Jordan Peterson, mm-hmm. Andrew, Tate, um, Andrew Tate, Kanye, Kanye, Donald Trump. Yeah, thanks to a Twitter poll. Yeah, is he that a troll? Ran There's no a poll. Fucking, there's no way that that was like his deciding factor. Uh, I think it was. What the? Fuck? I think fuck. Elon's pretty transparent about all his thoughts. Yeah, and he ran a poll yeah. and was like, "Should Trump be reinstated? Yes or no?" And yes, it was one. close. Too. It was close. It was like forty-eight to mm-hmm. fifty-three Two or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Elon but he's not actually me. back because he's says he's not going to come back. He yeah. wants to stay on a uh, Truth Social. Truth Social. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Elon, Elon confuses me because it's like I'm not sure if he's literally just a big ass troll or if he's like being serious and he's a little bit of a troll. You he's know what both. I mean? Like, yeah. I think okay, he's well, that's he needs to pick one lane. I and think just stick Elon, to it. and I kind of think that because he has always believed in the simulation theory and like all these kind of wild philosophies, he, he can kind of do. I think he's like whatever. Life is a big fucking joke. Whatever, yeah. nothing matters, and I'm just gonna have fun on the ride. I think that's yeah. kind of his approach to life. Like he doesn't take anything too seriously. It seems. No, he's you're right. The world's richest human being. How yeah. could he not take things? How could you have that mindset? And then also, because he thinks it's like a giant wild. game. Like he just thinks it's you know you can do whatever, and anyone's capable of doing anything because it's all you a simulation. Do you ever read or watch that um, one movie, Ready Player One, or something like that? Oh I yeah, that vibes. No, it's like, I haven't seen that. It's like, I mean, you're like living in a simulation world and everyone's like a video, you're like a video game character. And like, yeah. Oh, is that the one with uh, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds? Um, I believe mm, so. I love me some Ryan Maybe. Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds video game movie. What was that? It was Ryan so Reynolds good. Is hot. That movie. Yeah, you would like this movie, dude. Free Guy. That is such a good movie. Huh. I never heard of it. Anyway. Yeah. Elon kind of thinks he's free guy. He's just free to do whatever he wants. Well, apparently he is. I mean, when you're the world's richest person. Yeah. Kind of seems endless like endless power. You can just buy a whole platform with millions of users on a whim, and then yeah. and let's a- get a rise out of people. I think yeah. too. Like that's why I mean, doing all these layoffs and firings, and he wants mm-hmm. to feel like he's in control. Mm-hmm. Clearly, like the mm-hmm. you decide if you want to leave or stay. If you stay, you know, yeah, it's, it was almost like it seemed like he was trying to get. I don't know. I think it's all exciting for him. He just it's a fun little toy, nice little. Twitter toy he bought himself to entertain himself. But Twitter while he's sitting toy. alone. I mean, this dude is on Twitter all fucking day. Twitter toy. He is on there so much. It's shocking. It no, it is. It's like how do you have how do you have that much time in a day? I guess it's all simulation, so it doesn't matter. <sighs> yeah. Well He is on there like all day. Yeah, he really is. Has he had, what's his latest tweet today? What do we got? Um, let's take a look. Oh, that's the other thing that we were talking about. So I don't follow him, but I see every single one of his tweets and I don't know why. And then Kendall, you said that you don't or you thought you don't follow him. I didn't think I had followed him. No. And then same with Corelli, yeah, right? Because I tweeted I about it the other day because like I was I kept on seeing Elon Elon's tweets everywhere. And yeah. like, I've never liked this dude. I've never been a st- I've never I've really not known anything about him like until more recently. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And so then I went to his page and it says you're following and it said I was following him. What and I'm like, hell? how? like, this isn't Tom. Like, he's it's like, not- hey, you automatically this focus. Isn't Tom, <laughs> the MySpace oh, I totally forgot. Tom would have never done us like no, this. You Tom guys. Would, no, Tom would have. He mm. would have let us know. We should have appreciated Tom while we had him. I love yeah. Tom. I know he was Let's very good. Tom these good days. Tom. What's he doing? Uh, he's rich as fuck. Is he? Oh, yeah. He sold MySpace for a lot. And he's just hanging out. out His last tweet is talking about, so BBC tweeted how 
Europe's biggest battery shortage or storage system switched on. And then he says Tesla mega packs are highly effective in addressing electricity demand spikes that cause power. So now outages. he's using this platform that he owns to promote his other businesses. Mm-hmm. It's really just the most fucked up thing. He also tweeted four hours ago, hope all judgy hall monitors stay on other platforms. Please, I'm begging you. Shut the fuck up. Namaste, he says at the end. Namaste. Yeah. Um, also, Kanye actually tweeted, testing, testing, seeing if my Twitter is unblocked. Mm-hmm. Oh. Don't and- kill what ye hate. Save what ye love. That was oh. all Elon's response. Oh, wow. Oh, LOL. He's so funny. LOL. So, so great. yeah. They're yeah. backing at him. Woo! Whoop, whoop. Uh, so, yeah. We is will Ethan Klein back, to, though? I don't know. Because about it. What the fuck, man? You're going to put all these other people on, but you won't let Ethan back on? Well, I think these people have like more of a following, more people are concerned about them not having the account. So it's like more of an urgent issue. Okay, true. But oh, um, anyway, we will continue to monitor the fire <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> the fire. So I have not gotten a haircut in over a year. And magically, my hair is still very healthy. And I really believe it's because of Vegamore. Vegamore has a clean and vegan approach to hair health and they use smart botanicals that promote visibly thicker, fuller, longer-looking hair. With help from Vegamore, get healthy, beautiful-looking hair without the use of harmful chemicals. All their products are cruelty-free and never contain potentially harmful chemicals like parabens or hormones. Vegamore has something for everyone looking to improve their hair. Their Grow Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit works together to create visibly thicker hair and improve hair from the roots. All you have to do is massage the shampoo into your scalp for 60 seconds and then follow up with the conditioner on lengths and ends. I love their Grow Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit. It smells so good, first off. I mean, obviously, it's like the cherry on top. But, oh my God, does it smell good. It smells like candy, you guys. And it also works really well. I love the way it makes my hair feel afterwards. It makes it feel very soft and nourished without it feeling greasy. I also am obsessed with their Scalp Detoxifying Serum. This stuff works so well at getting rid of excess buildup on your hair. I feel like half the time when I use dry shampoo, it just makes my hair feel so dirty afterwards, almost worse than before I used it. But with Vegamore's dry shampoo, it doesn't do that at all. It actually makes my hair feel refreshed. And with Vegamore, there's no risk when trying because they have a 90 day money back guarantee. But with 91% of customers saying they saw visibly thicker hair with Vegamore in just three months, you won't want to run out. Give your hair exactly what it's been craving with Vegamore. Go to vegamore.com slash sesh and use code sesh to save 20% on your first order. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash sesh code sesh to save 20% at vegamore.com slash sesh. Anyway, also, like we said, Ticketmaster is on fire. <laughs> this shit was Masters nuts, you guys. On fire. The Swifties go hard as hell. <laughs> you guys, for some reason, really wanted us to talk about this in this yeah. whole yeah. fiasco. We got a lot of requests that is to Taylor. speak on this, um, which I don't know why you want to speak on this because we really don't like understand super well all of no all of it. Which, I mean, it's a little confusing yeah. what exactly happened here. I think everyone's a little confused yeah. of the Taylor Swift 2023 Eras Tour Woo. disaster. 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 Will go in history as the disaster. On oh, the 15th, mm. pre sale tickets for verified fans with a code went live. It's like a horror story on the night before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> like, so that's not a horror story. Millions of Swifties <laughs> were in their, bed, in their bed, uh, clutching with, their codes. Ooh, with their Wi Fi strong and their codes ready. Mm-hmm. Okay, just so you know, pre sale tickets are basically. Fans can go and register and get this code that allows pe- those specific people to get access to ticket sales before the general public. And the idea is that you can then, you know, get a better selection of tickets before they all sell out to the general public. So that's kind of like the backstory of this. Um, but anyways, over 3.5 million fans pre-register for Taylor's verified fan program, the largest registration in Ticketmaster's history. That's crazy numbers. Mm-hmm. 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 Gosh, she three and a half million fans. She has so many fans. So many yeah. fans. Wide. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, one and a half million verified fans were chosen to get tickets or to get access to tickets. However, 14 million users tried to buy them, causing That's- the site to crash. 14 million That's, people. Wow. <laughs> At one time. That's At nice. one time. Did you see she won um six AMAs last night? Yeah. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. People love her. She got like She's, new fans now, too. Yeah. 
She has new fans. Yeah, like she's had her like her solid fans. Yeah, but, like, but now a lot in of more people, recent years. Yeah. yeah, she's like her her album isn't that bad. There's a couple of songs on there that I really like the new album. I like it too. I think it's good. Chanel says no comment. <laughs> <laughs> listen to it. <laughs> uh, I'm not perfect. a fan of Taylor Swift. Why is that? Because she annoys me. She sounds like she's blaming and everyone's going to hate me on this and be like, you just hate women. Yeah, I'm a woman hater now. But um, she sounds like she's just blaming everyone for her own problem. <laughs> Wait, why is it her? The sale? She's the, no, 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 no. Just, and I haven't listened to any of her new music. That's why I don't really, I'm not going to like give my full opinion. I'm just not a t- so, fan of Taylor Swift. Her old stuff is blaming everyone about everyone's fucking doing her wrong and screwing her over and blah blah blah. <laughs> <laughs> don't like so her. So you're still judging her music from like Correct. 2010. That's all I have to judge her on. I haven't listened to anything new, which I know I know in the comments because every time I bring this up, people are like, we'll just give her a chance now. Give her a chance. I don't care enough. Like, it's not that big of a deal to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm, pr- I'm happy for everyone who's a fan of Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy for you. I am. I'm happy for you i'm not gonna hate on the music you like if you love taylor swift more than anything in the world fine go for it in fact you really don't like her just like i think she's annoying i'm sorry watch her documentary so it's not just the music you just is (laughs) it her i don't know much about her (laughs) i was gonna say she's kind of private and unless you've watched the documentary there's no way out about her you should i think you'd change your mind i changed my mind me too i felt like a real piece of shit i was like a hardcore (laughs) swifty back in the country days yeah but then i kind of was like oh she's annoying then you became a hater for a bit yes yeah i was a hater yeah and then i watched her documentary i liked it i listened to her music her new music it's beautiful didn't you feel guilty she can write a mean song does she write her songs yes She's an, she plays a good. ton of other songs too. If you look up the mm-hmm. songs that Taylor Swift has mm-hmm. written, tons of other hits that you're probably a fan of. Yeah, <laughs> that she's behind. Oh no, she's honestly a brilliant songwriter. Oh, um, oh no, what has Taylor Swift done for the world? There's <laughs> this the song on the new album that literally makes me cry. It's called um, I don't even know. Okay, <laughs> well that's really touching. <laughs> I'm with you, Janelle. Honestly, oh, okay, thank no, you. No, I am with you because I. I have never really been a Swifty. I've never been a big fan of Taylor Swift. Just because also she annoys me. There's no reason. <laughs> there's no reason for her to annoy me, really. But I just don't really like her that much. That's kind of how I felt about her for a long time. Yeah. yeah same, I mean, I'm sure I she's a great why. person, but I just, she's not for me. She's a great person. <laughs> I'm sure. She also was the highest uh, oh, producer of like fucking emissions in the entire world for last no, year. No, that was... No. <laughs> oh, am I am I saying fake news right now? Yeah, oh, there was oh. well, there was a lot of. I mean, Got I'm it? sure it's still probably high up there with a lot of celebrities. But yeah, there was like an article that was spread a bunch of misinformation. And, oh, sorry. Yeah, fake I news. saw you Thank were spreading you were it actually. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, she, she definitely does use a private jet or two. You know. Oh yeah. She's not. Oh yeah, sure. Innocent in that regard. But yeah, this song bigger than the whole sky. Mm, beautiful song. Anyway, Any back ways. to the story okay. here. So basically what happened is all these fans, so it starts on the East Coast, right? Pre-sale access begins and everyone's logging on on the morning of the 15th. And many said that they were stuck in a 2,000 plus person queue or the site was experiencing outages. And then due to all the issues that Ticker, Ticketmaster was... <laughs> Tiger Master. Tiger Master was <laughs> experiencing. They basically pushed the West Coast sale back from 10 to 3 p.m. to try and fix it, but this didn't really fix the issue. Long story short, people were having major issues, and so Ticketmaster went ahead and put out a statement saying, <clears throat> a few updates on the Taylor Swift Eras tour on sale. There has been historically unprecedented demand with millions showing up to buy tickets for Taylor Swift. Hundreds of thousands of tickets have been sold. If you've already secured your ticket, you're all set. If you are currently in the queue, please hang tight. It's like voting. If you are in line to vote, stay in line. line. It's your constitutional right to vote. <laughs> uh, people are saying that they're move, you know, working as quickly as possible to get fans through. Um, blah, blah, blah. So they basically were like, thanks for your patience. LOL. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> like, pretty, pretty much, much that's what they said. Yep. But um, here's where it gets spicy. Yeah, because Taylor mm-hmm. had said that mm-hmm. the ticket prices would be lower. Mm-hmm. Um, she didn't want her fans to have to spend like outrageous amounts. Um, she wanted to avoid the platinum ticket system and said that the standard ticket prices would run from 49 bucks to 449 bucks for oh and VIP packages, which typically include, you know, merch and designated seating 
would range from $199 to $899 on a first come, first serve basis. Mm -hmm. And that is very, I like that about her, honestly. I like that she Mm -hmm. kind of like said that she was in a cap, you know, yeah. Put a cap on things because, yeah. They can, I mean, can she get makes expensive. so much. She has made so much money. Oh. I, I, mean, I think at that point to her, it's not really like about the money going to make a difference. Right. Yeah. To, well, I don't think she gets paid. Like, I think too, Ticketmaster, what I was reading is they set a limit for how much she'll get paid. And then that's why they think, you know, t- how Ticketmaster is becoming like making way mm-hmm. more money than mm-hmm. they're supposed to because any money on top of what, like over her cap, like they get, they take. Yeah, Mm. so it's just kind of ridiculous. But people were like, okay, so why are all these tickets? I mean, tickets were going for like fucking 20 20 grand and shit Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So I saw as high as like 94,000. Jesus. So obviously fans are like, what the hell? I thought, Taylor, you said that they weren't going to be that expensive and we weren't going to do dynamic pricing. Now, dynamic pricing is basically when pricing of tickets depends on the... the demand of the mm-hmm. tickets. So more people that are trying to get the tickets, it raises the pricing up. And Supply she said and that demand. she was opting out of that so that no matter how many mm-hmm. people are trying to get on or trying to get tickets, it mm-hmm. doesn't really matter. You know, the price is set. So she said that there wasn't going to be dynamic pricing, but obviously there was because like we said, these tickets yeah. were going for thousands of dollars. So that's the big confusion here. Right. Everyone was very upset about Didn't it. Didn't you say that if she did want to perform for all of those people, it would be, she would have to... I, be performing yeah. every night for two and a half years or something. Like I read that. something. I don't remember the exact like scenario, but something to do with if uh, if everyone who wanted to get a ticket to Taylor Swift was able to get one, she would have to perform. Now, again, I don't know how it depends on the venue size, but let's say the average venue size is around 10 to 12,000. She would have to perform like every single day for two and a half years. That's so insane. So just it kind of puts in perspective how many people are wanting to get tickets yeah. to her show. She's just huge. Yeah. Okay. So obviously the pre-sale was a fucking shit show in and of itself. But then two days after the pre-sale on eleven seventeen, this is the day before tickets are scheduled to open to the general public, Ticketmaster announced that the sale had been canceled altogether due to, quote, extraordinarily high demand on ticket systems and insufficient remaining ticket inventory to meet the demand. And of course, people were fucking livid because the general sale is canceled. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't get one in pre-sale, you're fucked, basically. And a lot of them were saying that Ticketmaster released too many tickets for the pre-sale and were totally Mm -hmm. unprepared, even though, you know, the company obviously chose how many codes to give fans out. Why did people give so many codes out without being prepared for all these people on their site. Yeah, it seems like just stupid on their part, but was it on purpose? But was it on purpose? Mm. I don't know, man. The era's tour disaster of 2003. What? <laughs> it's oh, 2023, right, right, right. Right, right, right. Just right. off by like 20, 20 years, years, you know. Even enough. Taylor hopped on Instagram and what did she say? She's sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> she said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> she said, I'm sorry, period. Okay. She says, well, it goes without saying that I'm extremely protective of my fans. We've been doing this for decades together. And over the years, I've brought so many elements of my career in house. I've done this specifically to improve the quality of my fans experience by doing it myself with my team who care as much about my fans as I do. It's really difficult for me to trust an outside entity with these relationships and loyalties and excruciating for me to just watch mistakes happen with no recourse. Mm. There are a multitude of reasons why people had such a hard time trying to get tickets. And I'm trying to figure out how this situation can be improved moving forward. I'm not going to make excuses for anyone because we asked them multiple times if they could handle this kind of demand. And we were assured that they could. It's truly amazing that 2.4 million people got tickets, but it really pisses me off that a lot of them feel like they went through several bear attacks (laughs) to get them. Mm. Stop. Sorry. Interesting wording. Okay. Settle down. It's not like you just got back from war. (laughs) (laughs) Some people are acting about this. Yeah. Some people are like crying. Oh, Oh, oh my gosh. Or worse. Yeah. Screaming on like their phone. (laughs) (laughs) Screaming Uh, on their phone. And to those who didn't get tickets, all I can say is my hope is to provide some more opportunities for us all to get together and sing these songs. Thank you for wanting to be there. 
you have no idea how much that means. Yeah, people were saying all types of crazy stuff to her. I saw this one tweet. I got deleted before I tried to find it again, but this girl had written out like a notes app oh thing God. to Taylor that was like telling her how much she supported her over the years, but she can't stand by and watch this. How could she let this happen to them? And then she literally told her, I would do anything for you. I would take a bullet for you. Oh, oh my like, God. Absolutely <laughs> absurd. Funny YouTube video. I'll, I'll send it to you guys. It's compilations of like people with their phones, like recording themselves, but like trying to get the tickets to like, I'm in the queue. Like I was on I Wait, was checking out. I want to see it. Let's Why see are it. they recording Sorry, themselves? Through my <laughs> like, let you. Why are they know. recording themselves? I've got to see this. Okay. <laughs> I have to wait for five hours and then not get anything. <laughs> they should have done better. I, I have not been able this. to even listen to Taylor Swift. <laughs> because when I hear what? her voice, I'm now triggered. Wait, I'm triggered. I'm seeing the queue. <laughs> I'm seeing the crashes. I'm triggered. <laughs> and the website <laughs> this is crashed and it put me back in the beginning. I'm sorry, Ticketmaster. <laughs> I have been doing this for the past four hours and you kicked me out. Taylor, I had it. I had tickets. <laughs> and it went to the beginning of the queue. 113 oh thousand dollars with fees. Sorry, okay. not trying to laugh at your pain, but also what the fuck? <laughs> I know. I mean, it's like I feel a little bad for them. It's their idol. No, I, I feel mean, bad for people not being. I I get that, like finding concert tickets is a pain in the ass. Sometimes. But it's also like get your ass some perspective. Okay? Right, that's what I'm saying. You're fine. And she's like Taylor, <laughs> as if Taylor's sitting there like, oh, no, <laughs> Stephanie's oh, not able to get her tickets. I do get the frustration though, especially if you've been waiting for that's so true. long. You're gearing up. I get it. It sucks. It sucks. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a no, dream. It I get it. But if my yeah, favorite artist was pulling this shit, I would be pissed too. I don't know if I'd be recording. Myself. If it was Crying. your one chance to see Jerry Garcia, he was going to be. <laughs> okay, but that's He's not dead. Dead. one chance. Like she's going to die again. <laughs> my God. Yeah, also, Jerry came back to life and was like, yo, I'm doing a concert. I would fucking chew off my right arm to see him. But also she's not like, she, this isn't her last tour. Also, no, the last she's like, I'm quitting after this. Like, she'll yeah, be fine. No, yeah. Her last tour was in 2018, November 2018. So, I mean, it was a few years ago. I mean, no, given COVID wasn't it. I think no, that, 2018, oh, 2020. 2020. Oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah, 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 yes. So I it's mean, a it's first been a little problem. bit problem. Okay, we feel 100. bad for y'all, but and then you go. Sorry, you're, you're going to okay. laugh and offend. I'm sorry, and don't hate me in the comments. <laughs> I need to laugh and offend. <laughs> well, sorry for the laugh and offend. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I. It's it's definitely a little much. It's a little much. I, I mean, it. that's yeah. like a shit show, though. Ticketmaster is fucking out of their minds. Yeah. Which brings us to our next subtopic. Ticketmaster lawsuits. Yes. Ooh. Sounds like their ass is in hot water and has been for a moment. This holiday season, I am giving thanks to my friends at Manscaped. I always want to make sure that whatever I get Josh is something he's actually going to use. And their performance package 4.0 is absolutely giving me my money's worth, if you know what I mean. Since he started using them for all his grooming needs, he loves the products so much, and so do I. So gift your man Manscaped this holiday season so his tree stands a little taller, if you know what I mean. Shut That's up. literally what they have. <laughs> Help him join the 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with 20% off and free shipping with the code SESH at manscaped.com. Think your holiday spread is good? It's time to give thanks to the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0, or as I like to call it, the perfect package for his perfect package. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, gotta give it to Manscaped for this excellent ad read. Inside, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, their Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, their Crop Preserver ball deodorant, their Crop Reviver toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. Think of it as a cornucopia for his balls and body. Hell yeah. And for the deal seekers out there, Manscaped seals the deal with two free gifts in their performance package 4.0, the Manscaped boxers and the shed travel bag. Gifting Manscaped is the ultimate hack to become the family's favorite. Manscaped has been busy this year, you guys, and they just launched their body buffer. This is the perfect addition to his shower routine to use with the refined body wash. Once he gets out of the shower, give him the deodorant for a refined scent on the go. So get 20% off and free shipping with code SESH at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with code SESH at manscaped.com. Get him the best gift of all from Manscaped. His balls will thank you. 
So Ticketmaster is facing a ton of backlash over its sale practices after this whole disaster. Because it's disaster. <laughs> <laughs> disaster. 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 Basically brought all these issues to light because they've been having issues you know, for actually a few months now. They've been under investigation. The Department of Justice mm-hmm. has been looking into Live Nation's past, which Live Nation is the parent company to Ticketmaster, and the overall dynamics of the ticket industry and is looking into whether the company has a monopoly over the ticketing industry. And this is actually a pretty serious issue, although yeah. it was people were having a nice LOL with it because they thought that this investigation started literally because of Taylor Swift and this last <laughs> disaster. The are so mad. We must bring the Department of Justice in. <laughs> no, they have been being looked at for a while now for, yeah, creating a mo- mop, monopoly. A monopoly. Mm-hmm. Oh, mop- wow. Monopoly. Words are fun today. Mm-hmm. This Doing is just, great. Yeah. Doing well. Anyway, so now, as a lot of us know, scalpers play a huge role in the issues with ticket pricing. People will buy as many tickets as they can get their hot little hands on and then resell them to fans (laughs) for huge profit. Mm. Ticketmaster has been known to work directly with scalpers, even though this goes against their own terms of service. So this is where it gets spicy because in their terms Mm. of service, they talk about how they don't work with scalpers, but they actually do. And we have this interesting video. Yes, some undercover footage. Yes, back in 2018, the Toronto Star and CBC reporters went undercover at a Ticketmaster Las Vegas ticket summit. And this is what they found. Mm. Let's review the evidence. Mm Mm-hmm. Do I have a gavel? Because Kendall broke it and it still well, hasn't been fixed. We're going to just be caught up on that for the rest of Toronto forever. St- no, not yet. <gasps> but we ordered poop lunch instead. <laughs> yeah, mm. I got the poop lunch on the, on the way, though. <laughs> All right, I'll add the gavel to my cart after oh, this. Oh, my God. Okay. Anyway, roll it. ...went undercover at a scalper's convention in Las Vegas this July to learn tricks of the ticket trade. Mm. They found representatives of Ticketmaster's <laughs> resale arm, Trade Desk, courting brokers on the convention room floor. There they were, selling a software product aimed directly at scalpers in order to help them to manage their vast inventory of seats and to resell them. This trade desk sales representative described a hands-off approach when it comes to monitoring how its clients harvest hundreds or thousands of tickets. I mean, and I want to I want to know the straight goods on whether Ticketmaster is going to be policing us using our multiple accounts. Uh, no. I have I have a gentleman who's got over 200 Ticketmaster.com accounts right into the point of sale. Sinks his tickets in every day. How how many brokers are using multiple accounts? I'd say pretty damn near every one. Uh, how else would you do it? Right? How else? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can't think of any of my clients that aren't using multiple. I mean, they have to because you, you want to get a good show at the ticket limits six or eight. You're not going to make a living on eight eight tickets. The policing of bots going after those types of things falls completely on the primary side. We have no input on it, no involvement with it. They don't come to you and say, here's this guy, Joe Smith. What's going on with this guy? What, what can you tell us about this guy? No, no. We don't share reports, we don't share names, we don't share account information with the primary side, period. That's a curiosity for us, given the fact that this is a company that, while simultaneously speaking negatively about scalping, was quietly courting scalpers as partners in this industry Mm. in an effort to grab a piece of the action. Mm, There you go. They're in on it, of course. Which makes sense because they make the the more that people can drive up the demand because now scalpers is a known thing that people will go on, buy as many tickets as they can, and Mm -hmm. they have bots to do it too. And then they'll resell them. So people who, you know, fans who actually want to go see the shows Mm -hmm. have to get on there quickly to try and beat the bots and beat the scalpers. But then if you don't, you know that there's always a chance you could buy them on resale, which people will fucking drive the prices up yep. tenfold. So much. Yeah. yeah. Which is just so unfair. So, yeah. I mean, we'll see. Because it really does seem like Ticketmaster is the main place that you get tickets for events. Yes. And I feel like this also goes back to their parent company, Live Nation, who we just know as a horrible history of Tons of bullshit. I mean, especially we talked a lot about them during the whole Travis Scott thing. They put on that Astro Fest and Mm -hmm. all of that. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. They're in a lot of hot water in multiple ways right now. It looks like it'll be interesting to see how this plays out Mm -hmm. over the next couple weeks to months. Um, But we will let you guys know if there's any updates. But yeah, it sounds like a lot of 
Swift fans are unfortunately out of luck this time around. Boom, boom, boom. Sorry. <laughs> that was rude. It's okay. Oh, no, I do feel bad for you guys. I'm sorry that... <laughs> <laughs> no, on the real, like I said, I feel bad. It sucks. And yeah. I wish that like Ticketmaster actually was able to keep their shit together because it, they're like the real ones to be pissed at, obviously. Dude, I couldn't imagine going to a Taylor Swift concert. It would be so chaotic. Like everyone there would be going so hard. The energy would be too intense for me. I that, couldn't handle it. That'd be some chaotic energy. Mm-hmm. My friend got tickets to to one of the to one of the shows here. She said she had no no issue getting her tickets. Really? I know yeah. people who got oh. them. Wow! Just yeah, just a smooth sailing. It was a smooth sailing, and she wasn't scalped for them either. Are these people so. making it up? Then no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No, I mean, I'm <laughs> all these Swifties are crying. It's all fake. <laughs> it's all fake. No, I I think that there's a lot of behind the scenes bullshit that Ticketmaster's doing. So it's interesting. A lot of people do seem to be blaming Taylor for this. I'm curious, like why? I don't really think it's her fault. It's just being misdirected to Taylor. Yeah, I feel like it 100 yeah. percent should go to Ticketmaster because yeah, they're the real problem. Yeah, and she's like. I mean, a lot of artists do go into the dynamic pricing yeah. because they're going to make more money in the end. So but she, she, it she is kind of cool that to. she wasn't going to do that. So how did this get so fucked up? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. But she did wait till Friday <clears throat> and to like to say something, like to comment about it. So mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people felt like they were in the dark or... Maybe she was in the dark though, right? Yeah. Like, she probably mm-hmm. was confused about what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, true. it's kind of an interesting situation though. Taylor does seem like she is for her fans, though. She does. She seems oh, like she's yeah. hardcore. Into she her seems fans, like a people's yeah. people. She's a people's people for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good, a people's person. She loves anyway, her fans. we will let you guys know if there's any updates on that next week. But yeah, that's that's pretty much all we got today. We know today was a little all over the place, and sometimes it is on the sesh, folks. You yeah, never know what kind you're of the vibe get. of this show. All over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's going to be it for this episode. Again, thank you to our sponsor, Poop Lunch. <laughs> we love you so much. Shout out to Poop Lunch. We love you so much. <laughs> Use code POOPSESH for poop percent off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, and we're bye, done. guys. Love you all. See you in the next session. But, but until then, keep, keep it fresh. fresh.